What's happening, Booth Junkies? Mike Delgadio here with another installment of the Reaper for VoiceOver series. This is the second video on the setup and configuration of Reaper as the ultimate voiceover machine. Now it's time to start thinking about how you're going to keep track of and manage all of your project files. Let's jump in. First, I'm going to shrink my Reaper window up here just a bit and put Finder next to it. So starting off, Reaper creates a folder called Reaper Media, and it just kind of jams everything in there. To see this, let's save a project. File, Save, Project 1. See how it created some files? Now let's record a few seconds of audio. Stop. Now Reaper will constantly ask you to save every time you hit stop. So the first thing we'll do is we'll uncheck that on stop checkbox, and that way it will just automatically save every single time we hit stop. If you don't, you're gonna go crazy. So just uncheck it now and click save all. We'll do it again. Record, stop. Now let's save the project again and see what Reaper did. We have all different kinds of files. First is this .rpp file. That's the project file itself. All the UI settings, tracks, FX, and all that jazz for the project. It's the overall controlling file for the project. And when you save a project, that's the file that's created. Next, we have the WAV files. These are the actual recordings that you're laying down on disk when your mic is armed and recording. After that, you have these repeak files that have the same name as the WAV. These are the actual WAV form that you see in the UI on the track. Now, the repeak files themselves, they're temporary. If you delete them, it's no big deal. Reaper will just recreate them when you reopen that project again. So those are the basic files. And frankly, after about 10 projects, this turns into an unholy mess. Everything is just sort of jumbled together, and it makes it darn near impossible to figure out which file is with which project. So let's put an end to that. Let's tell Reaper how to organize our files in a way that makes sense is easy to understand and easy to archive. Let's start by checking a setting from the first part of this tutorial. If you haven't seen that tutorial video, I strongly recommend it. It's really just transformative in making Reaper ultra fast for voiceover work. That setting I'm talking about is in the file and then project settings. Then go over to the media tab. In the path to save media files, make sure you have the word media and click OK. Then commit this setting to your VoiceOver project template. Click File, then Project Templates, then Save Project as a Template, then select your VoiceOver template or make a new one if you're just starting out. Now this template should be your default project template, which you can check in Reaper, Preferences, Project, and confirm that that file is the one that loads on every new project. If you have questions about that, go back to the previous video in this series and I'll walk you through it there. All right, good, now that we have that, let's talk about projects. First, I never work in Reaper without working in a project file. As soon as I start a new project, I want a project file committed to disk and for it to have a name. But Mike, I hear you saying, I don't wanna create a million little project directories for all the millions of auditions I do each month, and I hear you. Here's what I do instead for that. Each month I create a new project where I can quickly get in, record an audition, render it, and get out. This keeps all my audition work together and it saves me from having a million tiny little projects. All right, back to it. So go to Reaper, then Preferences. And remember, if you're on Windows, this is Options, then Preferences. Go to Project in the sidebar, then check Prompt to Save on a new project. While we're on the screen, let's look down at that Project Saving section. We wanna keep most of these things checked. Personally, I like to have the timestamp backup checked and the keep undo histories checked. That way, if I come back to a project later after I've saved it, I can still undo work that I did. But I like to have it make much more frequent backups, especially when I'm doing things like editing an audiobook. So I have it set to backup every one minute. And you can change this to any time or when you're not recording. This makes for a few extra backup files, but the project files themselves aren't that big, and you don't want to lose your work. I keep the things that say not recommended unchecked. I keep those things unchecked. Now, most of these other settings are sane, so we can leave them for the moment, but we'll be back to the screen a little bit later in the video. All right, so these are preferences that are global to Reaper, and they'll always be applied. 
So let's start a new project. File, then New Project. See how it prompts you to save? Well, that's what we want. But before you do anything, look down at the bottom of this window. You see it's got some checkboxes. First, we want to check that Create Subdirectory for Project. This is absolutely essential for your projects. Clicking this will ensure that all your projects stay separate and they don't get all intermingled. Also on the screen, click the Copy All Media into Project Directory. This way, if you ever import a music bed or a sound effect or some other piece of voice work, it'll get copied into your project and then it will stay with your project even if you archive it. Now, here's where I strongly suggest your first line of just basic backup defense. I personally keep all of my Reaper projects that I'm working on in Dropbox. That way, as they're getting recorded, they're getting synchronized to the cloud. So that way, if you accidentally delete one of those WAV files or your project file, you'll be able to recover it in your Dropbox for 30 days. This also means you can transition your project to another computer immediately in the case of a catastrophic failure. You don't have to lose time restoring a hard drive and all that stuff. So if you can get to another computer, you can get your project onto that computer in minutes and keep working if the deadline is short. If you're not a Dropbox user but want to become one, I would really, really appreciate it if you just followed that Dropbox link in the description. If you use that link to set up, I get a little bonus space in my Dropbox, and frankly, I could use every last megabyte that they'll loan me. All right, let's get back to it. In Finder, go to your Dropbox folder and make a new folder in it called Reaper Projects. Or you can use some other name like VoiceOver Work or VoiceOver Projects or whatever makes sense to you. Switching back over to Reaper, navigate to that Dropbox folder you just made and let's put our first project in there. Okay, let's give it a name like First Project. And let's see what it did on disk. In our Reaper Projects folder, we now have a new folder called First Project. And within that, there's an RPP file for all of our settings and a media folder, remember we just did that, where all of our recordings were go. That is super cool. Look how our project is just set up perfectly to begin recording. So let's record a few seconds worth. Record. Stop. Now we'll switch back to Finder and look in that media folder. See it there? That's where your recording is. All right, let's go back one folder. I don't need to clutter up my project file with all my backups in the same folder. So after a minute, you'll see Reaper start to put backups in there as you're working. That's going to end up cluttering up your project folder. So let's tell Reaper to just stash those backups somewhere else so that we can go get them if we need them. Go back to Reaper, Preferences, Project. See where it says Save Time Stamped File? Well, I uncheck the Project Directory option, and I browse to a new folder. So go to Dropbox, then Reaper Projects, and then make a new folder called Backups. We'll just stash the backup files in there. Sweet. As I mentioned before, Reaper also creates this file that represents the waveform that you see on your screen. It's called the Repeaks file. Well, you don't really need to keep those, because Reaper will just recreate them. So you can keep those with your files, your project files, or what I do is I just set them in another temporary directory. If they get lost, Reaper's just going to recreate them, so let's put them somewhere else. I check that store all peak caches and browse to a directory that's outside my Dropbox. This can be in my documents or in some other temp directory that you can delete on a regular basis. Now staying on this screen, I like to keep all my final rendered files together and outside of the project directory. That way it keeps the size of the project directory down when it comes time to archive, because you can always just make a new render again. So I have the renders in another directory that's in my Dropbox that I call renders. That way I get at least one almost instant backup of my final work also. And this also makes for a really nice repository of final work that may eventually end up in a demo reel. Also, for a little extra protection, I also have an if this then that recipe that I use on my final renders, but that's for a different video. Okay, so also you can designate a directory that Reaper should use if you elect not to create a project file when starting something fresh. Uh, sometimes you might say, I'm just going to work on this for a second, I don't need to save it, but then you end up wanting it later. So I put a folder in my Dropbox 
under the Reaper projects that's called uncategorized, where I tell it to put all that stuff by default. Okay, so here's the last configuration bit. Do you remember when we looked in the file and the file names are this cryptic batch of numbers? Well, you can actually change that naming convention that Reaper uses when putting your recordings on disk. After using Reaper for a while, I personally prefer a slightly different item name for the items that I've recorded. One that makes it easier for me to figure out where it came from if I'm seeing it outside of a project. So I go to Reaper, Preferences, Audio, Recording, File Name. And I like to add the project name to the item. It's probably just psychological, but personally, I like being able to look in my project directory and see my recordings with the right project name. It just makes more sense to me. All right, sweet. Well, let's check our work. Let's go through and see what we've done, make sure that we have everything just so. So let's create a new project. And we're not going to save this one that we're working on. And we're going to call this second project. See, now it puts a second project on disk. It automatically puts a file for media, and it creates our RPP file in that directory. So now if we go and record something real quick just to check our files, we see now that our file names have that second project in the beginning. So now we can see in the beginning of all of our WAV files that we have the correct project. As we do it for each new one, it always just adds a new one there. Very handy. And we can also see that we're not cluttered up with any of those repeats files. When we save it, when we do a manual save, it will put that rpp.back file or back file there. And then once it starts to do its automatic backups, it will put it in the backups directory. You see it just popped in there. That's perfect. So now we have our project set up absolutely perfect. Everything will be very well organized. We'll be able to keep all of our projects together in one place, but they won't intermingle with each other. All right, congratulations. Reaper is now configured to manage all of your files on disk. And really, at this point, Reaper is the ultimate voiceover machine. So if you've been following along, you now have a pretty good understanding of how to set up Reaper the way you want it, and you should have good logical defaults for nearly every aspect of production. In the next video, we'll dive a little bit deeper into backing up and archiving your projects. Thank you so much for watching. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave them in the comments or hit me up on Twitter. That's also a good place to request additional topics for videos. I love getting ideas from people. Also, I'm always adding videos to this series and to my channel, so please subscribe if you want to get updates for new videos. Thanks for watching.